Well, hello there, guys. Welcome to some Burma Road. Um, we're going to be, of course, starting here very, very soon. Uh, I just want to make sure that everything is running well. So give me one second to get the setup started. Okay, let's see. So welcome everybody, of course. Uh, we're gonna get started here pretty soon. If we're just trying to connect to uh, every single one of our uh, streaming services. And then we're gonna jump into Burma Road. Should be pretty interesting here. Welcome to our YouTube viewers as well as our Twitch viewers. Good to see you both. So I'm going to go ahead, guys, and jump in here to Burma Road. Um, and we're actually starting with quite an interesting mission. So I'm not going to start just yet. Uh, of course, we want to wait for everybody to get here. So we're going to give people a little bit of a chance. Um, I'm also playing in display mode. So you might see the screen, you know, essentially minimize. We'll reopen the screen, no problem whatsoever. Uh, but every time I want to take a look at what you guys have to say, I, of course, have to stop and take a little break uh, to see what you guys are saying. So let's go ahead and see. Give me one second, guys. Let me take a look here at our uh, actual Slytherin group, our Twitch chat. So you can see right now the screen is empty. We will be bringing up Burma Road um, in a second here. I do want to jump on the other chat room. I want to make sure that we have most of our chat rooms open here and that most people are, of course, uh, watching here. So, of course, I'm sure you guys know this is another addition to the Order of Battle 2 franchise. Uh, really, really great addition as well. A lot of fun to be had. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into the game. I believe we're close enough to beginning. So let's go ahead and start the briefing. So, the city of Impal has been chosen as a major staging area for our return to Burma, but the Japanese have just launched a major offensive of their own in the area. Our primary objective is to defend the key locations at Senapati and Churapandur. Holding these locations should prevent the Japanese from encircling Impal. Intelligence reports have located two major Japanese supply dumps in the area. If possible, raiding these positions would significantly cripple the enemy's ability to supply their huge army. So obviously this is a possibility, um, is to try and destroy enemy supply dumps. A powerful army has been assembled against us, but the Indians have also committed their divisions to battle. Uh, they should be able to hold the main battle line in front of Impal, but must receive assistance if it looks like the city is in danger of being overrun. Uh, so this is definitely a major, major battle, and we're not going to tell you how far into the campaign this is, but there are a few things I do want to share with you guys about the campaign uh, before we jump into the fight. And essentially, this is one of our largest actual uh, additions to the game. We have 13 scenarios in this campaign, so it's just absolutely massive. Uh, there's, you really don't get much bigger than this. It's, it's a really very quite a large campaign. Uh, we also have expanded nations and units, so we've got a ton of new units for existing factions, as well as entire armies for Thailand and British India. Uh, Thailand, of course, is fighting alongside the Japanese, uh, whereas India is fighting alongside, well, the British. Um, a lot of new units. We've got Chindit's infantry. We've got the Gurkhas, the mighty Gurkhas, the Churchill Crocodile. Uh, with wonderful flamethrower. Of course, we've got some, several new commando units, uh, Sherman Crab, so that we can essentially disable landmines, as well as quite a lot more units. So this is not the only amount. Uh, we also have all sorts of new specializations, all sorts of new commanders. So we've really thrown a lot into this game, um, and it's just great. Once again, I am apologizing for, for the minimization. You might see the screen minimize every now and again. That's just because I'm actually taking a look at what you guys are saying in the chat logs. Um, and popping the game back open. So this is, um, I'm not gonna tell you what part of the actual campaign this mission is, uh, but let's just say that it's gonna take you a little while to get to this mission. So our job, of course, here in this particular mission is to defend Chudapandud um, from the Japanese. And we are actually playing with the British Colonial Infantry. 
um, as well as some Gurkha units. So I really wanted to play with this particular map because I wanted to show off a large battle in this particular campaign. Um, and this is actually uh, an invasion by the Japanese into the Indian mainland. So we are fighting as the colonials, as you know, quite a lot of Indian units trying to defend this area. We've also got some tanks up here, some M3s. They seem pretty nice, pretty, uh, pretty vicious little tank. And we're going to go ahead and end the turn and hope for the best. Now, I do believe that we can purchase some British units. So let me go ahead and try to do that. Let me grab... What's this? Now, this is one of our new units, a Wasp, a Flamethrower Carrier. So this is interesting, and I think this is the first carrier I've seen with a Flamethrower as its main weapon. Uh, quite interesting. Now, of course, I'm going to have to get my Churchills. So I'm going to grab a Churchill, put it here. I see a lot of planes here, so I'm tempted to go ahead and purchase some planes as well. But I think for now, uh, I'm just going to go for some artillery. Let's get the Sexton. In fact, I'll get the 7.2-inch howitzer and pay for the actual truck to carry it around in. Uh, this is a massive gun, as you can imagine. It's not easy to move with. Uh, and once we're done with our movement phase, we'll, of course, move into our attack phase. I do want to get some more Gurkhas. They're just awesome. And with a universal carrier, we can also get some defense on the ground. So let's go ahead and take that universal carrier as well. And give me one second while I minimize here. Good to see everybody. Uh, welcome, everybody, from Twitch and from YouTube. Uh, like I said, really great to see you guys. And, of course, if you have any requests, uh, let me know. If you want to see me, click on a unit, get some information on it. We can do that. So I'm going to go ahead now, guys. I'm going to end the turn and see what happens. Okay, so it has begun, and indeed, we are controlling the colonial infantry. But, of course, we still have some points to use um, for our British units. Now, first things first, I want to take this AA gun, and it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get any hits on the enemy, but let's hopefully... Um, fire with our artillery. Now, I should be more clear. It doesn't look like we're going to be getting any hits on the enemy planes. Of course, we'll still be getting hits on enemy infantry units. Um, and hello, Condra. I know, I know. Quite interesting. Uh, they haven't sent me anything, though, <laughs> so I don't think I'll be playing that. Um, let's go ahead and open fire first on the infantry units. So right now we're just trying to do as much damage to the enemy as possible. And if you guys want me to turn down um, the in-game sounds a little bit, let me know. It might be a little too loud. Uh, we're going to go ahead and strike with our infantry as well. There we go. All right, so the Japanese are already running away. And in this particular case, you could see that the Japanese are quite terrified. But they've got a lot of men. This was kind of uh, towards the end when the Japanese are desperate. They're trying to attack India. Uh, in a last-ditch effort to regain some territory, and it's not working out too well. There we go, six. Man. Got some excellent damage right there, some nice damage markers. Six is great. And I'm actually going to put this unit up here in the uh, sort of this hilly area, and we'll go ahead and attack once again. And as you guys see there, there's some rifle grenades. So we've also got some rifle grenades here. Uh, I am going to bring my Churchill down, but I want to try and hit this Type 98 k -E. So I'm going to bring him down uh, from the north, essentially. And look at the distance on this 7.2-inch howitzer. I mean, this is a massive, massive gun. And even at, let's see how many tiles. One, two, three, four, five tiles away, we could still get an incredible shot. So let's do it. Absolutely amazing. Uh, now, of course, we want to take our Colonial Infantry. We're going to keep moving, and I'm going to flank with these guys as well. So let me show you guys the cities we have to hold. It's very important we hold these cities. And I believe it's Kang... It's uh, Chura... I'm going to try to pronounce this. Chura Chandpur. Uh, <coughs> and this city right here. Uh, let's see if we can get some artillery out of it to get the name. In Impal. And, of course, the name of this particular mission is Impal 44... Um, no, yeah, it's the same terrain type. It's a good question, uh, Kandra, but it's the same terrain type, although this terrain has a lot of uh, actual mountains on it, or a lot of, really not mountains, just scorched area. We can actually see where it says scorched. Uh, to me, it sort of looks sort of hilly, but this is just really burnt territory, and the flames give it away as well. Uh, just burned territory. The Japanese were trying to bomb us out of existence. They didn't succeed, um, and as such, we get to keep fighting on. So let's keep it up. 
Uh, I do want to bring this AA gun closer, but I'm actually concerned that the Japanese are eventually going to fly over Impal. Uh, in this case, we would have no defense, so we're going to stay put right here. Move forward here. I'm trying to get everybody on the border. I'm assuming the Japanese are only attacking from this area, and again, I could be wrong. They could be attacking from multiple locations, but I'm just I'm making a guess here, an educated guess. Or maybe not so educated, since this is my first time playing uh, this mission. Oh my goodness! Oh! Nice work, nice work. Alright, I also want to chase these guys down. Uh, and actually, one of the main reasons is I want to see if I can cut them off uh, from supply. We also don't know how many Japanese could be attacking in this area. There could be a lot. Um, as I told you before, this is a massive Japanese invasion. Get him out of here, boys. And there we go. All right, so we're starting to cut them off. They still have this road, though, uh, that's bringing them supplies. But, of course, the, the trick is to try and destabilize their supplies as much as possible. Now, I know we can fire with this artillery piece, but I want to move him a little bit closer so that he's got um, even more of a chance to hit the enemy. We'll, of course, take our infantry units. And actually, with some of these, I'm going to keep them back, especially those that are on the tank traps. Let's keep them back here uh, for defense. And we'll end our turn. Guys, wish us the best. Uh, but actually, one more thing I want to do. Just one more thing. Oh, I don't think we can. Oh, maybe we can. A, B a Buford. A Bufighter. Or a Seafire MK3. Let's go with the just regular old Spitfire. It's a tried and trusted plane. We're going to put it in Impal here so we can actually start to do some damage to the enemy Air Force. Uh, the enemy Air Force does seem to be pretty, pretty strong in this fight, so... I want to definitely hit the Japanese hard, especially with all of these bombers. This is going to cause us nothing but sadness and, uh, and, of course, heartache. So let's go ahead and end the turn. Turn it over to the Japanese and hope for the best. So we're not moving all of our units, uh, but we will move a few of these, especially these in the north. I didn't even spot these guys. And, oh my goodness, we're going to be ambushed. Luckily, these units in the northeast aren't actually that important to us. That being said, we still want to defend this area. We don't just want to give it up without a fight. So I am going to bring some more men down. And it looks like we've got a nice little railroad here uh, to help transport our men. But a lot of these guys are just going to go here and wait on the border. We already see the Japanese preparing for a mass attack. And, of course, they're trying to attack the country from multiple locations. Here we go. Nice shooting there with the 25-pounder. And once again, the rail lines here in India are, work extremely well. So we can actually move this artillery around quite a lot. But I think we're going to keep it where it is. Uh, I think we also have to defend Senapati. At the very least, Senapati is an important location to us. All right, I think we can go ahead and end the turn, guys. Let's hope for the absolute best. Before I do, though, I'm going to put this guy right here on the border. I already see the enemy. Let's go ahead and get some artillery fire in here. And, of course, we're also going to attack with our Colonial Infantry. Okay, the enemy is badly damaged at this point. We actually don't have many men at Churachanpur to defend, so I'm going to see if I can not get some Gurkhas. And for those of you that don't know about the history of the Gurkhas, you should absolutely do your research. Uh, do just do research about their their sidearm, the Kukri. Uh, vicious, vicious knife, and it can do a lot of damage. Uh, so you don't want to get into close combat if you're playing against your friend and you're playing as the Japanese. Don't get into close combat with the Gurkhas. You're not going to win that fight. It's, it's quite unlikely that you're going to win that fight. And here's actually the unit information panel. Uh, you can actually take a look at all the different um, abilities here uh, and how it does against infantry, the offensive combat stats, etc. Let's go ahead and end the turn. We're turning it over to the Japanese. Hopefully we're not turning over our land to the Japanese, though.
All right, a lot of armor moving up. Well, not actual armor as in tanks. Although we do have some tanks, but a lot of armored personnel carriers. And yeah, we're, we're starting to see some tanks here. I mean, I told you guys this was a Japanese invasion. They're not coming just to visit. Uh, they're certainly coming to try and stay. How's it going, Darth and Gamer? Good to see you. My goodness, wow, our men are, are under a heavy, heavy fire. So that initial attack was nothing compared to this. We actually got a really good uh, response attack, but unfortunately, we're getting hit hard. Uh, we have some Churchills, Kendra, but that's a good point. I think we're going to need some more Churchills now that I see what they've got. I did not expect the enemy to attack uh, with this many men this quickly. I mean, I knew there was an invasion going on, but I didn't realize the invasion was this powerful. Uh, for those of you just arriving, this is, of course, Burma Road. Uh, the newest DLC for um, Order of Battle 2, or excuse me, Order of Battle of uh, World War 2. And this is going to be releasing on the 17th of this month. So this is definitely something you want to pick up, uh, if, especially if you like this theater of war. I think it's quite rare to actually find, uh, you know, games, movies, books, just about anything talking about this particular part of World War II. Um, of course, the, the conflict with British India and, Je and uh, Imperial Japan. Uh, quite a lot to see here, quite a lot to learn, especially about all of the specialized units that we have here. Uh, we already mentioned Gurkhas before, so we're adding a lot of unit specialization into this particular DLC, uh, and I'm talking about a lot. And just, just imagine, 13 scenarios. Um, 13 scenarios, just absolutely amazing. I think one of our largest DLCs yet, and uh, just a lot of replay value here. Look at that artillery. Let's hope our Churchill can fight back against this guy. Nice! Look at that! So, you're absolutely right, Condro. We have to buy more tanks. Um, because right there, our Churchill completely outclassed the enemy tank. So, if we can get a few more Churchills, I think we're going to be okay. We have to hope so, of course. My goodness our men are running behind enemy lines this can't be good they're really they're actually running through the jungle to escape the Japanese Okay, guys, back to our turn, of course, and um, this is interesting. One of the secondary objectives here is to capture the Japanese supply depot at Gambai and More. We're not even in a position to defend ourselves right now. I'm thinking we absolutely have to stay put. We've got to try and hold these positions. Uh, but look at this. Hold the line. Indian forces have made contact with the enemy, and all their available reserve tanks have been deployed to battle. Well, what do you know? Um, now, I'm hoping that they're talking about our reserve tanks, 
and not the enemy's reserve tanks because they have more than enough. Uh, they don't need any more. But even if that's the case, even if it's the enemy's reserve tanks, which unfortunately I think it is, uh, we're still going to go ahead and try to buy some Churchills. So let's go for the tanks. We definitely want to get those Churchills. We've got plenty of cash, although I'm not sure about requisition points. Uh, so there we go. We're dropping the Churchill down. Let's drop some Churchills over here. And of course, we're going to use this one to finish off this Japanese tank. Good work. Try to cut off the enemy at every possible turn. Of course, when this battle started, we were actually doing extremely well against all this enemy infantry. That has now changed. The enemy is now advancing on all fronts. So that change happened quite quickly, and at this point, I'm just trying to move up all the tanks we can. We also have some enemy planes here. I definitely want to try to take them down. So we're going to go ahead and move our Spitfire against this Key 67 Hiryu. Hopefully we get a nice shot. Oh yeah. Okay, so now, of course, we're talking about our two-pounder. Now, this thing could potentially do some damage to the enemy tank. Um, you know, in this game, just like a lot of strategy games, you sometimes have to sacrifice your units. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and fire on this tank. And that's absolutely a good suggestion, Wavel. We are going to be buying tanks left and right here. We're going to buy some more Churchills. We could get some more air units as well. That's not a bad idea. But I think right now the Churchill... Uh, tank is going to be hopefully our saving grace against the Japanese um, armor. I think they can deal with the Japanese armor pretty well. Our infantry do very well against the enemy infantry. The problem is they're beating us right now because of it. they have all this armor support. So if we're going to attack these guys, we've got to be quite smart about it. First thing I'm going to do is actually try to fire at their artillery. So they're trying to decimate this artillery so they get no artillery support at all. That, of course, is going to make it a little harder for them to advance, although not much harder. They just have so many men in this battle that uh, advancing is, is not going to be very difficult for them, to be quite honest. Let's see what we can do here. We could actually attack the enemy here and possibly kill them. Uh, the only reason I'm going to make this move is twofold. Number one, we're going to get a better attack on the enemy. We could possibly destroy them and just did. And also we're going to get some defense in this jungle tile. So I'll stay in the jungle tile. Of course, we'll probably be attacked and destroyed, but hopefully our men can take out a few of those Japanese tanks before being completely destroyed. I'm also going to go ahead and get another fighter plane. Let's get a... Let's get a Bu fighter, actually. Now this is a heavy fighter, for those of you that don't know. So it is made to take down other planes, of course. But it's quite a large plane. Um, so when you first see this in the sky, let's say you're an enemy pilot, you might assume this is just a bomber. Of course, once you get close enough, it's a bit too late, uh, and you realize you're now in very serious danger uh, and that the, uh, the enemy could easily kill you. Let's move forward here. And unfortunately, on this particular area, I don't think we're going to do very well. Even moving into the scorched earth, we're, we're not going to do that well at all. Um, I do think we can do some damage to this 20 millimeter spog, though. So we're going to go ahead and attack. And that's an interesting little little vehicle there. It's a shame that we can't take a look at the enemy uh, characteristics here, because I want to take a look. That thing's got an AA gun on it, which is quite interesting to me. So I'm going to see if I can't kill that infantry unit. I know, I know, we should probably fire on the tank, but we're not going to kill the tank. At the very least, we can weaken the enemy infantry. make their job just a tiny bit harder probably not much harder as you can see they're gonna have to retreat and we can still buy even more units and that's one great thing about this particular battle is that the amount of actual um, requisition points is massive so we really can put a lot of British units here uh, you can't forget that at this point or at this time in history of course India was a colony and it became a or I should say India was a direct, directly under Britain in terms of uh, actual rule. Um, so, of course, referred to as British India instead of India as we know today. Uh, so the British are somewhat responsible for defending this particular area. 
Uh, so I think we've bought everything, well, not everything we need. We need a whole lot more, but at least enough to make us somewhat comfortable. We want to keep moving some men up, and then, of course, we want to prepare for the next Japanese attack, and we know it's going to be vicious. The first one was absolutely incredible. We're preparing for the next one, and I'm sure it's going to be even more vicious. Uh, up here in the north, though, we could actually go ahead and attack. There's that rifle grenade. Let's see if we can't deploy this guy. This is the 25-pounder. Damn it, I should, have, I should have deployed him there, but got a little greedy. Uh, and let's open fire and just try to weaken these units. We're not going to try to destroy them. We're just going to try to weaken them so that the enemy is not pushing as hard here as they are in other parts of the map. All right, not too bad. Now we're turning it over to the enemy, and uh, things are going to get pretty bloody here. Uh, I will take a look at our YouTube page in one second here. I haven't said hello to our YouTube viewers, and I apologize for that. Oh, yes. So, of course, you're going to see the screen disappear just a little bit. Don't be afraid, guys. It will, it will return. Uh, it's not going anywhere. And it's good to see everybody here on YouTube. we got some people on Twitch as well. Uh, it looks like mostly, once again, Twitch wins out again. Uh, 23 viewers as opposed to only 7 on YouTube. Come on, YouTubers. You've got to get your friends into this. Uh, also, if you're new to our Twitch, please make sure to subscribe. Sharing is caring, as I'm sure you've heard. We're going to go ahead and end the turn, but not before I get one more attack against this enemy in infantry unit. The way I see this, if we can't stop their tanks with our infantry, we can at the very least totally obliterate their infantry so that when uh, their tanks do come through and we face them with our own tanks, we've at least removed sort of one objective, which is going to be to destroy the massive amount of infantry they have. So I think that's probably a good idea. We are going to move some men up. We're still going to try to engage them where we can. But of course, they've got a lot of men and a lot of air power as well. Uh, it's going to be pretty easy for the Japanese to finish us off here. In fact, all I can really do, and this is a crazy move, I'm just going to try to cut off their supply lines, um, as you can see here, just to mess with them. Uh, I'm not even sure if this is going to hurt them that much. And since we've already run behind their lines, I don't think we're actually doing any damage. But if we are, that would be hilarious if we just cut off their supply lines. I think we may have. No, unfortunately, they're still getting supplies from over here. So my dream of cutting them off that early on in the game just didn't pan out. Let's end the turn. As you can see, that massive armored attack is continuing. Their air force is just destroying every single target we have back here. Uh, and, of course, a Japanese invasion of India, as you would expect, is going to be pretty, pretty massive. And this is no exception. I mean, they are attacking us with everything they have. This is their last chance at gaining some more territory in India. And, of course, at the same time, at hurting the British quite a lot with this attack. So we'll see how it plays out, of course. Oh my goodness, our poor men right there, they just got killed. Those damn rifle grenades. Actually, this gun might be able to stand up to the tank a bit. Nice, not bad. Good shooting, man. Wow, 
Even our artillery actually managed to really damage those enemy tanks. Now that's one thing about Japanese tanks. Uh, most of them are not particularly adept uh, at fighting other tanks or even enemy artillery. They're quite light uh, in terms of their actual armor. So, of course, the Japanese are much more used to fighting in jungles. They're used to fighting in perhaps some urban areas. Uh, in general, the tank is not the most important part of their army. It's really their ground forces that are the most important part, or you could argue their air force, uh, which is quite good in this game and especially good in this particular battle. Uh, they just have so many tactical bombers, so many strategic bombers, that we barely stand a chance. Go on, attack the Churchill. Come on. Oh, he's going to attack the gun. No. moving up with those flame tanks. No infantry can stand up to that. There's just no way to uh, defend against that, really. Fight back, men. Good shooting. Oh my goodness. Well, they've died as brave British colonial warriors. Okay, guys, back to us. Awesome. Uh, once again, just give me one second, and uh, I do want to go over, before we uh, end this stream, I absolutely want to go over uh, the all of the features of, of the game. I know I've gone over it a few times, but I want to talk a little more about it. Uh, tanks and artillery units on trains have to be a station to get them off the train. Thank you, Wavel. Yep, unfortunately they do. Um, we're going to go ahead and open fire here at the k -Ni. I definitely want some dead Japanese tanks on my record. So I'm bringing all my Churchills down. Look at this beautiful situation. And actually, I'm fairly uh, confident. Remember, all we need to do in this battle is hold the city of Impal and hold the city of Churachanpur. If we can do that for... All right, it's quite a lot. 30 turns, so there's going to be a lot of fighting. Um, then, you know, we might be able to actually win here. So, speaking of 30 turns, uh, one thing that... For me, this DLC really means is tremendous replay value. It really does have tremendous replay value. We've got 13 scenarios. It's probably one of our longest campaigns. It's a really long campaign with a lot of very intricate battles. Of course, the Burma campaign in general was fought in the jungles quite a lot of the time. Sometimes it was fought in urban centers, things like this. But you can certainly expect a lot of interesting warfare um, in this situation. We also have new factions, uh, Thailand and British India. For those of you that don't know, the Thais were, I, could, I can't say that they were, they, they may have been, and we need, we need our World War II buffs here, they may have been allied with Japan, but I think they were just um, essentially supporters of Japan, but not actually allies. Uh, but of course, in this particular game, they will fight for the Japanese against the British or uh, the Indians. Uh, we also have, of course, the new campaigns, as I told you about. We've got new commanders and new unit specializations. I know a lot of you guys are interested in uh, the new unit specializations. We've also got commanders like William Slim, who's the leader of Britain's so-called Forgotten Army. Um, you know, really, really interesting units. We've got Chindit Infantry, Commandos, Gurkhas, the Churchill Crocodile, and that's just a few of them. Like, I'm just naming 
my personal favorites. There are so many other units. We see a few of them, or we've seen a few of them here in this particular battle. Um, and of course, the new specializations, and just a few examples of that would be land lease and the bomber stream. Uh, there are a, l a few more specializations. I don't want to give you all of them. Again, I'd be ruining the game for you if I told you every single thing about it. And this game is going to be released on the 17th of this month. So you absolutely still have time to get ready for this purchase. Uh, this is definitely something you want to pick up. Now, in the meantime, um, before we sign off, let's see if we can't kill a few more of these Japanese tanks. I think I'm actually going to move this uh, infantry back. I'm going to move the Grant forward. There we go. I always like to see a few wrecks. And Condra says, flamethrowing tanks, indeed. People do like the Churchills for that reason. Uh, the Churchill crocodiles, excuse me. Um, so the Churchill crocodiles, yes, they are equipped with flame flamethrowers, and uh, those flamethrowers are notorious for, uh, for turning infantry into Roman candles. Well, let's keep moving forward. Actually, our infantry is able to damage uh, the enemy armor pretty well, too, so... I'm not too surprised, actually. Once again, the Japanese armor was not the best. Uh, without a doubt, their infantry was, was far superior to their armor. Let's see if we can't bring in another tank here, or maybe at least fire on this position. Good shooting. And maybe we can even finish off this bomber with our Spitfire. Unfortunately, I think that Spitfire has already moved. Although we've got our Beaufort... But look at how much damage the enemy's done to us. Man. Just in that period of time. Now, we do have our AA guns. So let's go ahead and turn them against the enemy. I love the sound of those machine guns on the plane, I must admit. I think, unfortunately, in terms of Impal, uh, we're going to have to rely on the men on the front lines. We're really not going to be able to keep any troops in Impal if we want to defend it. This place is going to fall like a, like a pile of bricks if we remain here. So I'm going to go ahead and keep moving forward. I also want to see if we can't move this infantry division right here to destroy this enemy infantry division. Of course, that means we've got to move our guns back, but I think it's worthwhile. And we'll move our Gurkhas forward and see if they can't finish off this Japanese infantry. Move in with the Kukris, finish them off. Great work. Uh, we also have these guys right here, but I'd like to try and get an artillery shot on them first because we could potentially destroy another infantry unit. All right, can't win them all. Let's go open fire on them at least. So, of course, they're going to run to run for cover, which is the same thing I would do. If you can't win the fight, you know, live to fight another day. So this is Gambai, uh, and, of course, if you're playing this particular scenario, you could take Gambai and one other town. I believe it's More right here. Uh, and if you take these two towns, these are Japanese supply depots. You're going to obviously hurt the Japanese war effort tremendously. Uh, you're also going to get some extra points for specialization down the line. Uh, but this battle actually comes quite deep into the campaign. I'm not going to tell you how deep. This is, this is a tough, tough fight. Of course, this is the Japanese invasion of India. Um, so they're throwing everything they have at our units to try and stop us. Uh, and of course, we're doing everything we can to avoid a terrible fate, which would of course be a Japanese rule over this, this area. Let's go ahead and open fire. And at the time in India, there, there actually were se several organizations that uh, to, to get away from, from colonial rule, uh, supported the Japanese, but of course, when the war actually came, uh, India was was far more in favor of being ruled by the British at the time than, than by the Japanese, and I think they probably made the right decision. All right, let's see. We could start moving these guns uh, using our trains, but I think we'll keep them here, and I think we're going to continue trying to fire with these guns. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. And 
maybe we can finish this guy off. Unfortunately, I don't think we have any units that can get here in time unless that tank can move or unless we just disbanded it. I'm so desperate to kill the Japanese tanks. I'm almost tempted to disband, but I think we'll keep them here. Uh, and we could actually send in this fighter pilot to maybe finish off that bomber. I'm amazed that even though the Spitfire still has 10, he's going to have trouble taking out that bomber. Oh, well. All right. Well, guys, we are reaching the end of the stream. I am going to give some time for anybody uh, that wants to ask questions to go ahead and ask questions. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And hello, another sale. How are you doing, buddy? Um, so let's see if anybody does have anything to ask. If not, I do want to thank you guys for stopping by and for taking a look here at, uh, of course, our new Burma Road DLC. Um, anybody here? And I know there's a 20-second delay. So yes, there are um, several uh, sort of special forces units. Uh, the Chindits are one of them, the Commandos, the Gurkha, and a few others. So yes, there are definitely special forces units. And in fact, this, this we might almost call this one of the more oriented towards special forces uh, DLCs. You've got to keep in mind that a lot of the, the warfare in the Burma campaign occurred in jungles. Uh, so you know, to fight in jungles, you need a lot of specialized units. Uh, and just about every army in the world has some sort of jungle fighting unit or unit that's that's made to move through the jungle, uh, patrol through the jungle, ambush enemy units, etc. So there's a lot of that in this particular DLC. No problem, Wavel. Always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. Let's see if we have any of our YouTube friends. All good. Nice play throw. No problem, Mark. And thank you for stopping by. by. I really appreciate it, Mark Winner. Um, Let's see over here. And yes, I saw that uh, Wable was trying to get me to buy more bomber as, or more bombers for that particular stream. We really went heavy on the tanks, but a little light on the bombers. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I absolutely want you guys to take a look at Burma Road. You can actually go down below uh, this stream where it says Order of Battle Burma Road, and it says Next Up Order of Battle Burma Road. You can click that icon and actually take a look at the uh, all of the specializations and all of the 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 new abilities for yourself the new units uh, the new doctrines etc so go take a look at that guys and thank you so much for stopping by really really appreciate it i'm not going to see you guys for a few days because there's actually a uh, <coughs> four-day weekend here in italy so i'm going to miss you guys but i will see you wednesday of next week i'm not sure what we're going to be playing yet but we will decide fairly soon and take care have a great day guys